Hello there, Callum Johns here, back with Lego Star Wars The Complete Saga. Now we're going to do the final chapter of the episode 2 levels, which is the Attack on the Clones, and the level chapter is titled Count Dooku, which will be that boss battle with Obi Wan and Anakin fighting Count Dooku, of course. Oops, that happened. Episode 2. Attack of the Clones. Chapter 6. Count Dooku. As the battle rages between the clone forces of the Republic and the Separatist droid army, the Separatist leader Count Dooku flees to his secret hangar. Obi-Wan Kenobi and Anakin Skywalker follow closely behind, prepared for a final showdown with the Sith Lord. So what happened there? I was gesturing too much, knocked over the microphone right next to me, into my laptop screen, I went back slightly, and into here, which is just a stupid clumsy thing that happens sometimes, I think. Much better when I get my desktop computer and it's all solidly there. And I'll place things when I have more room out of the way. So yeah, there's a mini kit out there. You'd have to be a droid to get that. I'm gonna play as Anakin because I like his his different movements a bit more there. Still a bit more two-handed than Mace Windu, but he does a little flip. We can compare to over one here. The sand there, and he does a flip. Rather than the leap like that. Which everyone follows the standard of most of the Jedi in the game. So yeah, there was a whole bit outside I couldn't do because I couldn't grapple with Jedi characters. And there's a mini kit just for destroying things and doing whatnot. Ooh. So I like Count Dooku, he's cool. Shows the rule of the grey areas more where the original trilogy showed of very distinct black and white with the Empire versus the Rebellion. Count Dooku offered a more grey approach, even if it wasn't touched upon 100% in the movies, as he was the one that basically he turned from being a Jedi and thought that forming the Confederacy of Independent Systems was the best way of saving the Republic from the Sith threat, which he knew Darth Sidious was in charge of the Senate, which possibly he may not have known in exactly what way, which would have been interesting to find out. I forget exactly now. Oh, that's that. Uh, yeah, it's quite interesting. It was more of the grey areas in the expanded universe. Oh, I need a high jump character. Um, yeah. I forget if this side does that too, but... Let the AI take care of that. Oh, mini kit. Of course we want to go there. And a high jumping thing. Because the other's annoying, so let's go in here. It's cool to see them recreating the like... So what I want to do is actually... Do everything around... Similar to the Darth Maul fight. There's a boss battle at the end of each chapter. And I want to just... See if I can... See what I can do from just these things. So yeah, the table turns purple when the super sabers, which is, to be honest, why I've turned it off in a lot of my other playthroughs and not used it because I like seeing the different lightsaber colours. And the double jump and slam is the standard one to get past any of their guards. Neither. Blast the character for that one. Uh, 
And yeah, that goes. That's pretty much all the stuff around Dooku, I think, that I can do in free play, so. Let's focus on fighting. So. It's interesting because they actually work more together than in the movie, in this one. By doing that. And Kenobi seems quite aggressive there, rather than the normal Sorosu defensive formations in the form. And that's what they're doing there. So I should be able to play as Yoda. Which, so you know, it's something that makes sense. And that's him being all acrobatic, which makes sense when you know that he's a master of Ataru to make up for his small form. And yeah, you can't deflect his lightning as you owe this, so just get Obi-Wan. And that makes sense because Obi-Wan. Now, it's also interesting, I'll probably talk more about it later, but why Obi-Wan was chosen to take down General Grievous rather than anyone else. Here we go. Mm. <sighs> yeah. Really quick, because for some of those not even meaningful stuff, well, this is a children's story for the LEGO universe, because LEGO is children's and they don't add as much depth. Or I should say, lend as much time to it as others. Oh, the first I didn't get true Jedi. I kept all the suds I have. True Jedi, a bit more difficult with that one. And level complete was just a one gold brick there. Finished story. Let's do it. We see Darth Sidious and Darth Tyrannus. Interesting how he was Darth Tyrannus, but he uses the public face of Count Dooku, reclaiming his title from Sereno, the planet Sereno, if you didn't know. Hmm. Kieran Gaynor. I wonder if that's related to Gloria Gaynor, who's saying, I will survive. No, probably not. They're just similar now, well, the same last names. But it's interesting. Like the credits play at the end, they're probably the same credits as at the end of the Phantom Menace. But it's nice to give them credit where it's due, as well as get someone to talk about anything I might have on my mind, which. At the moment, not too much in regards to everything I'm doing, but yeah. I can say that at the same shop as I found that Empire Strikes Back meets a matchbook, which I mentioned in a previous video, probably in the previous credits, I forget exactly where now, but yeah, they had a hardcover Trusa Bakura, which is actually the book I'm reading at the moment, but I only have the paperback, so that's pretty cool, but. For the price it was, it wasn't worth me swapping over to the hardcover to read it. Especially when I'm travelling and the paperback's a lot easier to carry around with me. 
And 2D games actually seems really cool. They seem to really care about the universe. And especially for The Force Awakens, they let it expand a lot upon the lore with what material they would give them. Which they can do with the later ones, but of course, LEGO Star Wars was actually the first sort of games that made them really successful. I, forget, I don't know if they made games before, but LEGO Star Wars is what's really propelled them to the status of game development they are now, which is cool. Well, we'll get to Revenge of the Sith next time. Revenge of the Sith is actually my favourite prequel movie, but it's interesting because my father said that he's not as keen on Revenge of the Sith because it does get darker. He likes the uh, slightly lighter one, and harder ones. So he actually prefers Attack of the Clones and calls it the lovey dovey one. And The Phantom Menace. He prefers both of those over Revenge of the Sith. So that's quite interesting. And I do love the music of Star Wars. John Williams did a great job of the score and they reuse that here. Yeah. Published by Bantha Music. But did they come from Lucasfilm as well? Probably. Yeah, probably. But so pretty much Star Wars made it a leader in sound effects, industrial light and magic. Did a lot of work with that to come forward with that. I think they were a company before, but then they managed to learn a lot from Star Wars. And then there was also Skywalker Sound that came from Lucasfilm. So they had their own sound department. There was LucasArts, their own game department, which would have gone through and worked with TD Games most likely, or Lucasfilm did at least. And I think that's pretty much it for that. The books they let third party publishers do. So, for the books that went through the Bantam Books era, so the Bantam Books were a publisher. And when, when Tom moved on, I forget exactly, well, I don't really know exactly what happened to transfer the rights, but Del Rey got the rights and then continued on after a point. So, the novels after Return of the Jedi, that were released after Return of the Jedi, I should say, specify, separated into the Bantam era and the Del Rey era, because there was a bit of difference between what sort of content they let through as well, and the quality of writing and everything. And it would be interesting to think as I go through. I don't have my shelf with me to check at the moment because I'm still away, but the band may have concluded around the time of Crystal Star, which is an infamously bad Star Wars novel, even though I have still to read it. It should be interesting to see what my perspective on it is. I'm approaching them all as I want to enjoy them. I'll take them as they are without much expectation, although I... Like, I do expect that I'll quite be quite invested in the story as I am with a bunch of the others. Trees of Bakura at the moment is engaging me from the start, which is great. Bink Video Technology. Did they come from there as well, or is it just a coincidence that it's Bink and Jaja Binks? Anyway, but yeah. It'll be interesting to see what I think of the bad ones. I'm soon coming up to. Jedi Prince, which will be interesting. And Jedi Prince is one of those infamously bad ones as well. well that will be all for this video. I've come back up here and walk normally. Oh, the extra question mark ones here. What are they? Episode 2 bonus, Super Story character bonus. Uh, that'll be for a later time. I'm going to go out. Let's see what characters we have. It wasn't all for the video. I was just a bit of a silly. Said it early. What characters unlocked here? 
know we have some of them. Okay, so pretty much just what characters we have there. Oh, Dooku didn't get unlocked. I thought he would have. Count Dooku's later, I guess. Oh, yes, of course. After the actual defeat, which will be in episode 3. So, next time we'll be doing the first level of chapter 1 of episode 3 Revenge of the Sith for Lego Souls Complete Saga. But for now, that is all for this video. I'll see you all next time. As we listen to Cantina Band, I will say goodbye. And I'll see you next time.